uh-oh, NVIDIA's in big trouble. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by RGB Swap. If you're looking for a better alternative to eBay with lower fees and better protection, make sure to check out RGB Swap linked in the description below. So for years now, NVIDIA's been absolutely dominating the GPU market and doing very, very well for themselves, but a couple of things just happened that could definitely cause some major, major issues for NVIDIA in the future, and at least for me in my personal system, could finally cause me to say goodbye when it comes to NVIDIA graphics cards. But what is it that happened that's such a major blow to NVIDIA? It's going to cause them such major, major issues. Well, let's go ahead and start off by talking about software, because for a long time, NVIDIA's had a massive software advantage when you're choosing between NVIDIA and AMD GPUs, especially when it comes to creators. Creators have been hands down choosing NVIDIA because they've just simply had better support for stuff like Adobe software. In talking about Adobe, guys, I have some absolutely massive news to bring to you guys today. This is an absolute game changer, at least for me. Well, AMD and Adobe finally fixed GPU acceleration in Adobe Premiere Pro. And this is just one of the massive things that happened recently that's making AMD an even bigger threat to NVIDIA, especially in the future. And we're going to talk about later the RX 7000 series and all that various different stuff and like 600 watt cards coming out from NVIDIA and what this is going to mean for their future. But first, again, let's talk about Adobe Premiere Pro, because for me as a creator, and you have to keep in mind that all these YouTubers are creators, uh, we haven't been able to use NVIDIA in our personal systems if we've been using Adobe Premiere Pro, at least for a little while here, as when the RX 6000 series released and I tested it. Unfortunately, it just didn't work with Adobe Premiere Pro, meaning that you had to run it off of your CPU, and that was like 10 times slower, guys. So it was definitely not an optimal thing to be doing in our personal systems. And you might be asking, okay, that's great for you, but why do I care? And here's where I'm going to talk about why you should care about this. So all these creators over on YouTube that are going to be talking about graphics cards, what they have in their personal system is going to be a big influence on what people buy. It just simply is. And the same goes for stuff like streamers and all those other people who are using NVIDIA graphics cards. So AMD coming out and fixing GPU acceleration in Adobe Premiere Pro is a massive step forwards into software parity when it comes to AMD versus NVIDIA and is definitely going to be a huge help when it comes to them trying to battle against NVIDIA. And now to give you guys a little bit more context, not only is it actually working now in Adobe Premiere Pro, but I went ahead and actually transcoded some videos with AMD versus NVIDIA, the 6700 XT versus the RTX 3070. And what I found was when I did a 4K 59.94 frames per second video at 68 megabits per second in an H.264 compression algorithm, actually taking a look at AMD, it was able to complete it in 25 seconds and it actually took NVIDIA 26 seconds. Now moving on to H.265, AMD got it done in 23 seconds and NVIDIA took 33 seconds to do that same video encoding. So as you can see here, not only is AMD actually catching up to NVIDIA, they're actually surpassing them when it comes to these specific encoding algorithms. So that is definitely some really, really impressive stuff. And once again, huge news for creators. And for me personally, this means that I can finally purchase an AMD graphics card. It's actually an option. And when I went ahead and actually took a look at the finished videos side by side, they basically looked identical. I really couldn't see much, if any, of a difference between the two videos whatsoever. So yeah, the actual end product is looking good as well. And again, this is absolutely huge news because if creators are able to use these graphics cards, that means that this opens up a whole new wide audience of people who can now use AMD graphics cards who haven't been able to in the past. And this is definitely going to bite NVIDIA in the butt a little bit because, you know what, this has been one of the major things that NVIDIA has been holding over AMD for some time now. And for that to be taken away is definitely going to be bad news for NVIDIA and is going to cause major, major issues for them in the future. And speaking of major issues, there's a yet another thing that was talked about recently, and that's FSR 2.0. Because if you are someone who owns an NVIDIA card, well, chances are one of the reasons you purchase an NVIDIA card is because of DLSS. Well, actually, it's looking like that might be one of those things that's no longer going to be an issue as it's looking like AMD's FSR 2.0 is going to be a direct alternative to DLSS. Now, unlike their first iteration of FSR, FSR 2.0 actually does use temporal data, much like DLSS, meaning that these two technologies are rooted in the same basic principle, meaning that yes, they, in theory, could be able to give you the same image quality. And in fact, when I took a look at the pictures that were recently posted over by AMD, uh, you know what? FSR 2.0 versus 
native, at least in these still screenshots, I really couldn't tell much of a difference whatsoever, much like DLSS. Now, I think it's going to come down to what it looks like in motion, whether or not FSR 2.0 really is as good as DLSS, but that's something we're just going to have to wait and see about. And speaking of waiting and seeing, actually, I guess we're not going to have to wait too much longer, as AMD recently said this, when it comes to FSR 2.0. Quote, it is getting closer to being able to release FSR 2.0. The first game, such as Deathloop, should be available later this quarter, so stay tuned for more info. So there you have it, guys. Those are two of the major things that have been happening recently that are actually making me think that NVIDIA is going to be in for some serious trouble. But to make matters even worse for NVIDIA, it's actually looking like when it comes to the RTX 40 series versus the RX 7000 series, NVIDIA for the first time in a long time might actually lose the performance crown because we do have to keep in mind all the leaks and rumors are suggesting that AMD is building an absolute monster 15,000 core GPU, which is, by the way, three times the amount of cores right now available on the 6900 XT, and they're doing it with an MCM design or multi-chip module design. So this is much like their first iteration of Ryzen, and I think is going to absolutely revolutionize the way we do graphics you know as powerful as the RTX 4090 is sounding I mean it's sounding like it's gonna be two times as powerful or even possibly more than two times as powerful if the leaks are to be believed uh, honestly the leaks around the RX 7000 series are sounding even more ridiculous we're talking about like 2.2x at a minimum is what I'm hearing all the way up to like 2.7x the amount of performance of the 6900 XT and that might sound absolutely ridiculous but honestly if you think about it three times the cores higher clock speed higher IPC way more cash yes this is technically possible that they could be getting something like 2.5 times the amount of performance of the 6900 XT. Like I said earlier, MCM design is a revolutionary step when it comes to graphics, and this is likely going to be the biggest leap in graphics we have ever seen in any single generation. So Nvidia is absolutely struggling to try and keep up. Now, I do think that these two graphics cards, the 4090 and the 7900 XT or the 7950 XT, whatever they decide to call it, are actually going to come a little bit closer than the leaks and rumors are suggesting. I think that maybe the 7950 XT is going to end up maybe not scaling quite as well as we're hoping and maybe the 4090 will be able to get a little bit closer because Nvidia is going to be pushing the power on that thing as much as possible but ultimately I actually do believe for the first time in a very very long time that AMD is going to beat the RTX 4090 and I have not been able to say that for a long time. I'm also going to say something I haven't said in a long time. Uh, I actually do believe that next time around I might actually be considering an AMD graphics card in my personal system. Something I haven't been able to say for quite a while so very very exciting stuff and speaking of the performance again you know there's been talks of Nvidia releasing a 600 watt graphics card now we also know that the power on AMD cards are gonna be going up next generation but 600 watts is starting to get really ridiculous and it's making me think that Nvidia is very very worried about what AMD has to bring out and honestly they should be and so I actually do believe that you probably will see a 500 to 600 watt GPU coming out from Nvidia on their flagship card next generation and this thing is still going to fall short at least when it comes to regular gaming performance when compared to the 7950 xt i can almost guarantee it at this point so that's definitely some scary stuff. Nvidia is looking like they're going to be having some serious issues in the future because they're going to be probably losing the performance crown, losing in performance per watt. Maybe they'll win in something like ray tracing, but other than that, uh, they're going to be losing stuff like DLSS advantage. They're no longer going to be able to say that they're better for Adobe Premiere Pro, as at least in my test, uh, actually AMD was better. And even in the timeline performance, AMD was doing a little bit better. They both have their you know little issues, but AMD seems to have actually less issues in the timeline. So basically, every single reason why you'd go to by NVIDIA, maybe outside of like ray tracing, or maybe streamers like the encoder better on NVIDIA, but we'll have to wait and see how good AMD's next generation encoder is as well. Uh, outside of that stuff, basically there's going to be nothing that NVIDIA has over AMD in the next generation of GPUs, which is a first for a very, very long time, and has me actually very, very excited for the RX 7000 series, and I think this is going to be a great generation for gamers, because honestly, I think this level of competition is going to hold the prices back, so they don't get too far out of control, and it's going to make it so that you guys have a bunch of various different options, whether it be AMD, NVIDIA, or Intel that you can choose from to build your next gaming PC. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that AMD is actually going to beat NVIDIA next generation, or do you think NVIDIA is going to pull ahead once again? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.